Hello, and welcome to Prison Business War Games Overview of Financial Reporting for Vehicle and Equipment Dealerships. And in this video, we're going to review the common financial statements that vehicle and equipment dealers use to report on the performance of their business. So why are financial statements important? I mean, who looks at these things? Well, it turns out a lot of stakeholders in a business that is, people that have an interest in the business, look at financial statements. And here are just a few. You can see on our diagram that in the center of the screen, we're uh, showing you some of the stakeholders within a company. And then outside of the company, uh, a few of the stakeholders. And if you have a really good company, you'll have the privilege of having attorneys look at your financials as a potential target for a lawsuit. Okay, so our objectives in this short video discussion are to review how a vehicle or equipment dealership makes money and how they demonstrate this to the various stakeholders that we just talked about. And we'll review the three key financial statements, the income statement, which gives you some detail about the last period's revenue, costs, and profits. The balance sheet, which gives you some detail about what collectively makes up the company in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity at a point in time. And the cash flow statement, which gives you detail about where the company obtained and used cash. And we'll talk about revenue and expenses and what assets and liabilities and equity actually are. Here's a summary of the key financial statements, and we'll talk more in detail about the income statement and the balance sheet. But at the highest level, the income statement compares revenue and expenses, as we had discussed previously, associated with selling your product over a defined period of time. The balance sheet shows what the company has in assets at a point in time, uh, not a period of time, but a point in time, and who owns the assets, that is, the liabilities and the equity. And then the cash flow statement gives details about cash inflows and outflows for the company over a period of time. Let's talk about the income statement first. It's also called the profit and loss statement or the P&L. And sometimes also it's called the operating statement. And the idea here is that owners and other stakeholders need periodic information about how the company is doing in terms of revenues, expenses, and, and profit. And the income statement shows that. It shows revenue and expenses for a given period and what profit is left over. Here's a simplified sample income statement for a single sale of a piece of heavy equipment. Let's uh, say just as an example. And let's assume that I was paid $100,000 for this piece of equipment that I sold. That's revenue. And it cost me $80,000 for cost of goods sold or COGS, which is the direct uh, materials and direct labor cost. That is what you paid for this piece of equipment plus technician labor costs. And then gross profit is what's left over after you cover COGS. And then you've got operating expenses, which are overheads, advertising, things like that. And you're left with an operating profit, in this case, $10,000. And there are probably other expenses after this, like interest expenses and taxes. But for the example, we'll leave it here at operating profit. And just a couple of quick financial ratios that we can derive from, from this example. Our gross margin is the gross profit, uh, in this case, as a percent of revenue. So that's 20000 over the 100000 or 20%. And what that means is that for every dollar of sales, in this example, you have 20 cents left over after paying for direct materials and labor. And our operating margin in this example is the operating profit as a percent of revenue. So the $10,000 over the $100,000 of revenue or 10%. That means that for every dollar of sales, you have 10 cents left over after paying for both the direct materials and labor and your operating expenses like advertising. Okay, now we'll look at a more detailed income statement for a hypothetical vehicle or equipment dealership. And just real quickly, here's an important concept to keep in mind about the income statement. It's done for a specific period of time, and you're matching the revenues that were generated in that period of time 
with the expenses that were also incurred in that same period of time. And that's called the matching principle. It's a pretty important one to keep in mind as you think about the income statements. So let's go ahead and go through each of the major line items. You know, the first thing that we're showing you is net sales on the income statement. And by net sales, we just mean total sales, but net of trade discounts that you might have offered. Returns, uh, bulk discounts, things like that. And in the example, you see that it's broken down by the various departments, labor or service department, the parts department, uh, sales, finance, and insurance. And then we give you the total net sales number uh, at the bottom of this section. And notice on the right that we have a column called common size that relates each of the line items as a percentage of total net sales. So you know, 73.3% of your total net sales in this example are coming from equipment or vehicle sales, etc. The next line after total net sales is cost of goods sold or COGS. And COGS, again, are direct expenses, uh, usually labor and materials tied to the products that were sold. And then you also see the gross profit line and that's what's left over after direct expenses or cogs are taken from revenue and that's uh, what's left over again to cover the overheads interest taxes and hopefully provide some profit after it's all said and done and you can see the gross margin uh, line too as the common size of 18.7 percent and that's similar to what we had talked about on the previous screen uh, for this example and then we've got direct departmental expenses. These are overhead expenses that could be attributed directly to the departments. For instance, sales manager salary, uh, marketing specific to the service department, things like that. And after those department expenses are taken out, you've got departmental or selling gross profit, as you see the line item. And then the next uh, category that you'll see is general and administrative expenses, which are the other overhead expenses that aren't really department specific, but rather for the dealership overall. So these are things like, you know, the overall dealership's marketing, the general manager's salary, the administrative assistant, et cetera. So these are selling general and administrative expenses, which is often abbreviated as S, G, and A, for the dealership overall and you can see that these are further broken down here in our example into additional subcategories like selling uh, expenses fixed expenses etc so after taking out all of those expenses you've got a subtotal operating profit which in this example is 2.7 percent of net sales and operating profit is also known as earnings before interest and taxes or EBIT. And then uh, you take out the interest on the money that the dealership has borrowed. And you also take out taxes to get the final uh, uh, result, which is net profit, which is the bottom line. And in this case, you can see that it's 1.3% of total sales. So, you know, kind of break this down as we had done in the previous example for every dollar of revenue or total net sales that's flowing through this dealership 1.3 cents is left over after all expenses both direct and the overheads are taken out and now let's take a look at another financial statement the balance sheet and the balance sheet shows what the company owns in terms of assets and who owns it. Assets are really paid for either by suppliers and lenders, which are liabilities, or by the owners of the company, which is shown in stockholders' equity on the balance sheet. So assets have to equal liabilities plus owners' equity. And the balance sheet shows where the company is at a specific point in time. It shows the financial position of a company on the date that's noted on the on the balance sheet and it doesn't show how the company got to that position or where it might be headed in the future it's really a snapshot in time okay let's take a look at a sample balance sheet 
And again, just a reminder that assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. That's the way the statement is structured. So let's take a look at some of the assets. Uh, and you can see on the left-hand side of the screen that we have these divided up into short-term or current assets and then long-term or fixed assets. And current assets are defined broadly as assets that you expect to really turn into cash within a one-year period of time. So you can see some of the uh, line items here. We have cash. We've got accounts receivable, which is money that customers owe you for. You've delivered the product to them and they owe you cash. So you really expect to convert that to cash within a year. You've got inventory that you expect to sell within a year. So that's also a current asset. And then prepaid expenses in this example, it's zero in terms of the value. But these would be things you prepaid. Uh, perhaps some rent or utility bill that you paid in advance. So that would be a short-term asset. You expect to uh, convert that or turn it over within a year. And then going down, the long-term fixed assets, as an example, are you know, tools, machines, office equipment uh, that are longer-term. You don't expect to uh, turn those over within a year. And you can see that we have some accumulated depreciation on those assets. And that's what we had talked about uh, in the income statement example that for a long lived asset you quote unquote use it up period over period and you account for that each of the periods as an expense that's matched against revenues and you accumulate or add those up here on the balance sheet and so it's depleting the value of those assets over time as you use them up to generate revenue and then you can see we have the total for assets at the bottom of this column. And then if we look now on the right hand side of the balance sheet, you've got liabilities uh, and then owners or shareholders equity. And liabilities, again, we're going to divide those into the what we'll call current liabilities. And typically those are defined as liabilities that are expected to be paid off. Uh, within a year, whereas long-term liabilities are longer term, more than a year. And examples of current liabilities are accounts payable, that is money that you owe a supplier that has done some work or provided a service or product to you. You expect to pay them in cash within a year. Floor plan or the uh, essentially the loan that uh, a manufacturer has given you for the equipment or the vehicles that you have on your floor on your showroom that you expect to sell within the year and pay off that uh, manufacturer for that inventory you have short-term debt that you expect to pay off within a year and then accrued expenses again that would be paid off within the year and then long-term liabilities would be uh, longer term obligations that you have that are going to last longer than a year so you split those out separately so then also you have owners and shareholders equity shown in the bottom right this is made up of capital stock that is the money that the owners have put into the company uh, to start with and then also the retained earnings in the business that is the earnings that haven't been paid out as distributions or dividends to the owners of the company, but rather have been retained in the business. Perhaps you've bought some machinery or even bought some inventory or holding it in cash, but you haven't paid it out to the owners. So we put it back into the business. We account for that as retained earnings. And then you can see that we have total owner's equity, which when combined with total liabilities gives you the total liabilities and owner's equity, which has to equal, as we said, total assets. So that's a quick summary of the balance sheet. Okay, and this diagram shows at a high level how the three key financial statements are tied together. And starting with the income statement, net income, the bottom line, goes to one of two places. It either leaves the company and goes out as dividends or distributions to the owners of the company, or it stays in the company as retained earnings which is then shown on the balance sheet. And net income is also used as the starting point for the calculation of the cash flow statement. And ending cash from the cash flow statement is entered on the balance sheet 
Uh, and the balance sheet ties it all together through retained earnings and cash and shows, again, stakeholders what the overall financial position of the firm is. Well, that's a quick overview of the key financial statements that are used at equipment and vehicle dealerships. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you'd like to take the next step and really bring these numbers alive, go ahead and contact PRISM to find out more about our test drive dealership business simulation, and feel free to contact us through the email address here. And you can visit our website to watch videos of past courses that PRISM has run. And here's the link. Thanks again.